Hello, everybody. It's Mary at Yard Art R Us. Come here, Bear. I'll let y'all, while well, I'm getting people signed up, uh, letting people get on. Bear, see up here? Come here, Bear. Come here. This is my, uh, my doggy bear. She's a good girl. She's about 12 years old, and she's spoiled rotten. Hope you guys are having a good day. It's been a kind of good Labor Day for me. Hi, how are y'all? I got to go down to uh, my hometown today and just hang out with my sister, uh, my oldest sister, Kelly, and her kids, just acting silly and being goofy. Hey, Martina, how are you? Good to see you. So glad you're here. Happy Labor Day, everybody. It's almost over, but you know, hey. So I went down to my hometown. We're from a little town, or I'm from a little town called Van Vilek. It's uh, not too far from uh, Bay City, uh, about an hour and 10 minutes from here. I just hung out with my sister and her kids. Uh, she has three kids and we ate a big lunch and I really ate too much. And just told goofy stories and that kind of stuff. And then we came back to Pearland and I took a nap. That's kind of what I did. I, I did work at the shop this morning, but I didn't do anything this afternoon in the way of work. So I said I had to kind of get rested up so I could be with you guys tonight. So tonight we're gonna be, I'm gonna be painting, I always say we, but I'm gonna be painting this uh, scarecrow on a pumpkin. This is something I've done for a long time. Uh, I've had this pattern for a long time. And what I did is I went ahead and base coated the whole thing. I think you can kind of see in the light orange, which is uh, number 16 on our color palette. And just for the, I know we've got a, <clears throat> some of you guys that are new, and uh, those of you that have been watching me a while, you know all this, but for those of you that don't, this is our color palette. And so when you hear me call different numbers, I'm just, like I might say a number 16 light orange, that's this one right here. And we have those for sale at the shop. Uh, there, it's exterior house paint is what it is. Um, so you can buy that from us or you can, you know, get paint from wherever you want to. It's really up to you. It's just an option that we have for our customers. So I base coated this whole thing in a number 16 light orange. And just for y'all to know, all the years that I've done pumpkins and fall and all that stuff, this has always been my color for my pumpkins, this number 16 light orange. Uh, the reason I go with something almost like this light is so when I start to shade and highlight and outline, I can use all kinds of orange on here and, and still you'll see a, dif a difference in the base coat orange, the shading, and the highlighting orange. So, time I get three, I've got about three different oranges on here. So, I base coated the whole thing twice in orange. Then, I did her feet and her, uh, her two feet and her uh, hand in camel, which is, I think, number 31 camel. This is the lime green number 10. This is a scarecrow white. If you don't have scarecrow white, you can always just take the camel, mix mix a little bit of camel with white. So, you know, you don't have to buy the scarecrow white if you don't want to. Then I did the hair in light yellow. And then of course the eyes are in black. And this I did in a brilliant blue number five. So a lot of times on my um, lives, I will go ahead and do all of my base coating first. Because in yard art, we put a lot of paint on here. And so there has to be, uh, you know, drying time. So all of this is dry, except I just did her eyes tonight. But anyway, so I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to play with this. Um, I've never played with this. This is called a, let me think about this. Can't remember the name of it. It's a new brush I'm trying out. To tell you the truth, I don't know if I'm going to like it. But if you can tell... At the end of it, it's got, uh, the hairs are cut in here. Let me try to back up a little bit. Maybe right there you can see. Can y'all see? You see how the end of that brush has got uh, some hair, some bristles cut out of it. It's almost like a brush you would use for um, making things like grass. And so I'm going to play with this. I've never used this brush before, but I'm going to see if I like it. So I had a company get a hold of me and say, would you dry our brushes? Sure. Um, and it's almost gonna be a dry brush kind of thing. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of doing a light, 
a lot, there's not a lot of pressure on this brush is what I'm saying. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of making the hay or the hair, if you will. And I'm just, you can tell this brush is almost, the, I'll think of the name of it in a minute. Not a fan, I don't think it's called a fan brush. I should have checked that out before I got on here tonight, y'all. But uh, I'm just kind of making the hay or the straw, if you will, giving it a kind of a, a colorful look, but also where you still see a lot of that yellow base coat color come through. So I put the paint on here and then I'm just kind of taking it off. And I'm gonna come up here and do this part, just kind of wispy, nothing too serious. I'm not trying to make it all perfect. I'm getting a little more paint. The trick is you don't want too much paint because then it'll all glob together on you. There we go. So I put a little bit more here just to give it a little bit more color. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on here. Just a little bit of pressure. Okay, so really, in a matter of just a, a little bit, I've got what I think of as the hay or the hair kind of right where I want it. So I have my Scarecrow White here on the face, and typically, um, I don't always do this, but I'm gonna try something a little different. Here's Scarecrow White. And I've got my little taster spoon. I'm gonna put a little bit of Scarecrow White in this cup right here. Not a whole, whole lot. Just maybe a, a taster spoon full. And I'm gonna drip a little bit of that in there, a little bit of the shading yellow. Yes, the shading yellow that I used to make that hair. And I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but I'm gonna just try, no, I'm not feeling that, so we're gonna have to do something else. Let's try this. Nothing like doing some experimenting. Okay, so I'm going to try a, um, Mm, flat tip brush. This is the number 12. I mixed this, I didn't like it, so I'm gonna chunk it. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the shading yellow. So I base coated the hair and, and the straw in yellow, and I did this uh, dry brush look in a shading yellow. And I still have that shading yellow. And I'm going to just kinda come in here, and I'm going to give this face on my Scarecrow, a little bit of a shade around the face. I'm really, I'm just trying to give this face a little bit of color where it's not so um, kind of boring, I guess, if you will. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a, a shade up around here. Not a lot because of my brush, my area here is not that big because this face is so small but I'm giving it a little bit. And I might even come in here and do something like this. Giving just a little bit of a brush stroke for an eyebrow. Not much, not a whole lot. Then <clears throat> using this same color, but a different brush, still using that shading yellow. I've got this as a script liner. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna kinda sit here and put some, this shading yellow has quite a bit of water in it and that's what I want. I'm gonna use that shading yellow, same color that I outlined in, just a different brush. And I'm going to just kind of get down into that line that the CNC carved out, and that's gonna be her smile. So I'm using the shading yellow just with my script liner. And all I'm doing really is following the lines that the CNC did for me. And I'm just going to kind of make sure i got enough paint to go down in there in that line. There's the smile I have, right? So I'm going to go back and pick up my flat tip brush or my shader brush, if you will. Still that number 12. And here is the shading orange, which is number 17. Just kind of putting some paint on the end there. And I'm gonna come over here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on the nose here. Not a whole, whole, whole lot, but a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. I think I like that. Now, I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to kind of come over here and just make some brush strokes. I don't have a lot of paint. In fact, I've probably got too much paint on that stroke right there. And I just am kind of giving this hair a little bit more color. That's all I'm doing. I'm gonna come over here and kind of do the same thing. There you go. Now, with, I'm gonna pick up my, um, go back to my script liner. Going back to the shading orange, and I'm gonna make this go down in there on that line that the CNC did. Just gonna kind of go down in there, that's all I'm doing. There we go. I think I got it where I want it. Okay. So I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit, and I'm going to let that dry. I like the the blue hat that I have here, but it's a little it's a little too dark for me. So what I'm going to do, this is called Number 5 Brilliant Blue. And this is the color right here. That's what it is. Hey, Teresa from North Carolina. So good to see you. How are you? We're paint I'm painting a scarecrow on a pumpkin. I've just been working on her hair and her face right now. So uh, this color up here is called a number five brilliant blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number five brilliant blue and I'm going to put a little bit in it right here. Just a little bit. And I'm going to put some water in here. Just a little bit of that. And I'm going to put some white paint in here. Hey, Con Con, that Connie's my sister. She's forever trying to help me out and keep me going in the straight and narrow. So, I'm taking the Brilliant Blue and some white, and I'm just, and some water, okay? Putting some water on it, because I, um, the paint that we use is an exterior house grade paint, just a uh, latex paint, and uh, it has a tendency to be thick, and I don't always want that. In fact, most of the time, like if I'm base coating, I'll probably leave it thick. But when I'm shading or highlighting or outlining, hey, Sandy, Stormy, Ohio, how are you? So glad you guys could join us. So I've got this, right? I've, I took the brilliant blue and the white and I mixed it with some water. So I'm gonna get my flat tip brush or my shader. In this case, this size, ooh, y'all. Ooh, Lord, this thing is just, it says 13 millimeter. I wanna think that that's half inch, but I could be wrong. I'm gonna take this blue that I just mixed. I'm gonna call it a light blue because I took the brilliant blue and the, and the white and I mixed it. And I'm gonna take this brush and I'm just gonna kind of come around up here. Because this hat is so, so, so dark, that, that blue is so dark, it's a little bit dark for my taste, so I'm going to lighten it up. Normally, in most cases, you'll see me base coat a lighter color and shade and a darker. But this is exactly opposite of what I would normally do. I'm base coating in a dark color and shading in the lighter color. It just kind of gives you a different look. It'll lighten that blue hat up some. And uh, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna get my script liner, All right? And I'm going to put some white paint in here. Okay, I gotta put some water in here. And I just use these two ounce cups. I get them at Sam's. They were my lifesaver because I just use them over and over and over. All right. Jennifer, how are you? I spent the afternoon at Jennifer's house. Jennifer's married to my nephew. I was up there at their house today with my sister. We were all just kind of acting silly, you know, doing what families do. So I've got some white paint and I'm gonna come in here with that. And I'm gonna kinda just kinda come where I put that um, blue, that light blue. And by the time I get through, I still have a blue hat, but it's a very much a, a lighter blue, okay? And that's all I did is just put, and now while I have, just because I have the white on there, I would, uh, I'd probably come in here and just do some white around here. Those of you that have been following us, you know that Ashley and I, 
we tend to put white just about on everything we do as far as a highlight color. And this is just a script liner I have in my hand. And I'm just kind of making, I call them little brush strokes or tick marks or whatever you want to call them. Okay, and I'm just kind of going in here and <coughs> giving it some white. Okay, so really I have all of this done that I need to do except for the outlining. And I'm not gonna worry about that right now because it's still drying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let all of that dry and then I'll come back and show y'all some outlining on that. I'm gonna kind of put it up there where y'all can see all kinds of stuff I have on there. Okay, so let's do the uh, lime green dress. All right, let's put all this back over here. So let me find my lime green. You would think by now, you don't think somebody took my lime green now, do you? So in the case of this lime green, this is, it's this color right here. I'm going to use the dark green to, uh, we call this number 12 dark green. Now, I'm gonna kind of throw these things at you. If they work for you, they do. If they don't, they don't. So. Let's say, uh, you know, you don't have the dark green. Maybe you have a green at home of a paint that you already have, but you don't have the dark green. And what you can do, again, I put water in almost everything I do because this is a house paint and it's a little bit thick. So if you don't have dark green, and I can just kind of show you. Don't go overboard with the black paint because that's very easy to do. But you can always kind of, not every paint, but a lot of them you can darken them up and make a shading color by just doing this. And you can see I'm not there yet, Emma, because I'm, I'm trying to get darker. Uh, let's see, I think that black is empty. Let's go to this one. And I'm just gonna put enough paint in here till it's dark the way I want it to be. And again, you would only do this if you don't have the dark green because there's going to be times in your painting projects you're not going to, you're not going to, it's kind of like when you get ready to cook uh, something at home and you have every ingredient for your recipe except for one. Who the heck wants to go to the store? Not me. I think most of us feel that way. So sometimes you just have to improvise. So I'm just making some of, uh, it's not as dark as the dark uh, green that we have in our, in our line, but you can get the idea all I did was take that light green, put black in there, and stir, 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 with some water, okay? And this is our regular dark green. This is what I made now. They are different, but hey, if that's all you got, and you're trying to finish a project, or you're trying to get something done, and you don't wanna go to the store, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this dark green that I just made, and all I did was take that lime green, with some black paint and with some um, water. All right, so I've got this. I think this is a half inch, y'all. I'm gonna just bring that paint down here. If you'll put water in your paint, that'll help your, excuse me, that will help you get that paint to go where you want it to. Because paint that's real gummy or real dry, it's not gonna move the way you want it. And you want paint to move, especially not necessarily when you're when you're base coating, but when you're shading, you want you want that paint to move. That's what you want. That's the whole point. And you're not going to get it to move it's, if it's pasty, if it's gummy, if it's dry, if it's all stuck together. Forget it. You're going to get frustrated. It's not going to move the way you want it to. So I'm going to come up here, okay? And then I'll do this. And then I'll probably come in here and I'll just do a little bit in here, not a lot. I'd probably just kind of put some brush strokes in here, just wherever I think, okay? And that's probably all I would do to the green dress. Now I've got camel feet and hands. Something I like, and you don't necessarily have to do it, you just do what you like. But the look that I like a lot of times on camel <clears throat> is, Shading Brown. Now we use Shading Brown. It's number 34 in our palette and we use Shading Brown a lot. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Sherry. How are y'all? So good to see you guys. So this is some Shading Brown. I just brought some from the shop a little earlier today. That's what Shading Brown looks like. 
Okay, so the deal with shading brown, it's this is a color, uh, we have 37 colors, and, and most of them have just come from years and years of us doing projects and a lot of trial and error. And uh, But this color, the shading brown, is always gonna look good on all of your browns or your light off browns because it's a warm color. And I think doing yard art, <clears throat> in a lot of cases, it lends itself we re I just think the warmer colors look better. So I use a lot of shading brown on a lot of things, but particularly in the fall on anything that's brown or light brown or camel or anything like that. I do it a lot on my uh, turkeys for Thanksgiving, a lot on the gingerbreads at Christmas, a lot on the reindeers. So any of those sorts of things. And so this is that shading brown, one of my favorite, favorite colors. I don't really care for the color by itself per se, but I love what it does as a shading color because it is the right amount of brown and it is the right amount of red. It's got a lot of red in it, not too much, but enough that it really, really warms it up. So that's probably why I like it as much as I do. And that's, that's all I'm gonna do on the feet. Now I'm on the feet and the hand. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to clean it out and all I have over here is water. Y'all can't see it. It's just water. I'm cleaning it out with water. And uh, that's the other thing. When it comes to painting, I have to have a lot of water around me because I'm always putting water in the, in the paint. <clears throat> and then I'm always using water to clean my brushes. Uh, so this is shading orange number 17, I think. I might have gotten too much water in here, but you can see I'm stirring, 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 stirring. Uh, I think I've got some more shading brown or shading orange over here. I do. Let's put some in here. Ah, that's not much better, but we'll try it. We'll go with it for right now. Okay. So I've got this flat tip brush or something that Ashley and I call our shading brush. Technically, I don't think it's called a shading brush, but that's what we call it. And I'm just following the lines of that CNC right now. That's all I'm doing, just following that. Gonna kind of come up here. And I'm gonna go over here. Um, now, on this, what I would do is I would pick up my script liner and using that same color for just a second <clears throat> is. Um, I'm gonna dip it in there. And I'll, I'm gonna use the same color, just a different brush. And I'm just trying to get a little bit more paint on there. I am gonna come back with some red orange, but I am trying to get a, enough of this shading orange on there. And then you'll see in a minute when I get that red orange, it's gonna look really good. All right, so let me go in here and let's get the, let me get the red orange. Again, I have my little two ounce cup here. Let me get my red orange. Or we sometimes, Ashley and I call it the outline orange. I'm gonna put some water in it. And on your outline orange, it, it almost looks red until you start putting it on pumpkins. And then to me, it looks a dark orange. So I put some water here and I'm stir, stir, stir. That's what I spend half my life stirring, y'all. I guess in the other half painting. Yeah. All right, so I've got my script liner and I'm just gonna outline this pumpkin a little bit. Now, obviously, if this is a color that, that doesn't really suit you, you can do whatever you want. This, the good thing about watching me do it is you can pick the things that, I, that you like and then the things that you don't like, you don't have to do. That's pretty good. And I'm just going up and down to get it in that CNC line with my what we call a red orange. I think it's number 19 on our color palette, red orange. And I'm gonna kinda, now I'll kinda come on here on that shading orange and I'll just lightly, very, very lightly, I'll take this script liner and I'll just kinda put a few brush strokes in there. Not very dark, but just kinda lightly. And then of course out here, I just outline it. And then again, on that shading orange, I'll just come in here with this script liner very, very lightly and put a brush stroke or two in there. 
okay? Now, I think I've got that part down, although I, for the, um, the feet and the hand. So I had, I used the shading brown. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take just a drop or two of that shading brown, not much, and I'm gonna mix it with just a little bit of what we call shading red. I don't need a lot because the shading red, I think is just too dark. So you can tell I don't have the shading brown. I have shading brown and I have shading red. Not a lot, because I don't need a lot. And then I'm gonna put a couple drops of water in there and I'm fixing to stir, 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 stir. Uh, Victoria said she has pieces that she did uh, eight years ago. Hey, Vic Miss Victoria, that goes back to that MDO signboard material that we use, and that goes back to using the house paint. That, that's what it is. All right, so I've mixed the shading brown and I've mixed the shading red. And I'm going to just pick up my script liner, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the feet and her hand, the two feet and the hand. And hopefully, I want a little bit of difference in my outline and my shading color, so let's put it in there. Yeah, I like that, y'all. It's not a big difference, but it is enough of a difference that I think I'm gonna like it. So I'm getting enough paint to go into that CNC line that's dug way down in there. And I'm just outlining is all I'm doing. And I'll probably do this. I would come up here with that script liner and just give it a little bit of a brush stroke. Don't be afraid to mix paints. Get you a, some, a small cup like this of some sort or, you know, and just kind of mix a few drops together. And that way, you, if it's something you don't like, then you don't have a lot invested. Because <clears throat> there's a lot of times I've mixed paint that I didn't like them. You know, eventually, though, you kind of get the, the feel for what you're going to like. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm just putting that paint in that line where that CNC was, uh, where the CNC bit just grooved down in there. Okay. Just coming in here in that line. And you can tell I didn't use a whole lot of paint because I knew I didn't need a lot of paint. And then I would come back in here just a little bit in that shading brown and just drag my brush a little bit. Now, with the uh, dark green, I think what I'm gonna do, because I don't like the idea of doing that in, in a black, I don't, I don't like the idea of having black on there. So that, that I, I mixed a little bit, I'm fixing to do this. I put a lot more black in there. I'm gonna put some of this water in there and I'm gonna stir, stir, stir. And that's gonna be my outline color for her dress. And I just made it darker. See, I'm getting it dark. I'm, when I'm uh, mixing like this, in this case, what my goal is, is to get it dark enough that when you look at it, you may think that's black, and then you think, no, that's not black, that's green. You can't really, really tell because it is so dark. It's got a lot of black in it, doesn't it? But that's what I'm gonna use with this. So I'm gonna come in here with my script liner, and I'm just gonna go in here. And it just gives me enough, not a big, big difference. Now, obviously, if you want a big difference, you just put more black in it or just use black. Either, you know, it's really whatever you want. And that's the cool thing about watching me. You can kind of take what you like from it. And then if you don't like any of it, then you don't have to do it. I have my dogs over here, y'all. We have five dogs on this property. And they, they, they basically get to run and go wherever they want. They're very spoiled, but we love them. That's just what we do, we spoil them. Okay, so I'm going to finish this, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I'm gonna finish doing her dress uh, up under here, kind of down here by the pumpkin. I don't think y'all can see that over here. There we go. Just doing her dress is all I'm doing. And of course, I'm gonna come back here in a little bit and we're gonna put a lot of white on here. Okay. Now I wanna go back and I'm going to get my red orange and I'm going to outline her hair and her face. And then it's a matter of putting some white on her and that's probably about it. This is red orange, this is my script liner. And uh, you'll see in a minute when I start putting a lot of this paint on. To me, this is why I said I use a light, a really light orange as my base coat. Because then when I start putting this red orange on or that shading orange, I just get all kind of orange colors on here. Which for fall is really what I like, fall or Halloween. And I'm going down into the groove of that CNC. Now I'm gonna take this uh, script liner very, very lightly and kind of come in here and give it a little bit more right in here. That's it, okay? So when you're doing that, I've, I've got a heavy hand when I'm outlining her hair like I am right now. I'm trying to get down into the groove of that, where that CNC bit etched the pattern that I've got a heavy hand, I've got quite a bit of paint, and I'm kind of bearing down on that brush. And that's what you want to do when you're trying to fill in that CNC line or you're just trying to outline something. Okay, so I do that with a, with, with a little bit of a pressure, maybe a little bit of a heavy hand, if you will. But when I come in here and I do her hair, I'm going with a light hand, very light pressure, very light. Okay, don't want to put a whole lot on there. Okay, so let's come over here. Too much junk in here, y'all. Mess that up. Let me fix that. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is outline the face. So you see what I did is I have scarecrow white, and then I have that shading yellow, and then that outline <clears throat> orange, and that's what I like on that face. It's gonna give me a lot of your fall colors, without being too too overwhelming. And again, when I'm in, going down to the groove, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on that brush with quite a bit of paint. Now, I'm gonna do this, the, the edges of the hay or the hair. Just gonna kinda come in there. And I'm just going around the edge of that, of the hay or the hair, if you will. Okay, so I've gotta bring that out here. and I would do this. I'm gonna very lightly. And you can see by the time you do all this to the hay or the hair, you got a lot of action going on, which is kind of what I do for the fall hay on oh my scarecrows. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. This little guy's really not that bad to paint. <laughs> Now we're at the point where we're ready to, okay, what I'm gonna do, this blue that I mixed up earlier, I'm gonna put a little bit more on the script liner. This is that blue that I mixed up, and I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna make that paint lay down into that groove where that CNC was. Just gonna cover that up. Just kind of get me a good, thick, light blue coat. Okay, all right, I think I'm gonna call the hat done. And now, all I'm gonna do is put some highlight on this guy. It's pretty simple, not a whole lot to it. So I've got my white, I've got my script liner. I'm gonna take some of that paint off. and I just kind of have a light pan at my brush stroke. No right or wrong answer. I mean, no right or wrong way to do it. Just kind of put it 
where you think you would like to see it. That's kind of what I do. And I usually kind of just put it where the shading color is not, okay? Just where where a base coat is coming through is where I is typically where I put my white. <clears throat> Let's come over here. I don't have much left, but I am gonna go ahead. I always do this. I always like to give a white dot there because to me that makes those eyes just kind of come alive. What I would probably do on this outer part, I'm going to just lightly take this brush and kind of do a, uh, very light hand, doing a dashed line or dotted or dashed, I guess. I guess dashed is really right. And y'all, that's about it. I'm going to show you. Okay, so you can see on the face and on the hair, we got quite a bit of brush strokes going on. But I think that's what makes her cute. Okay? Then we come down to that green. And of course, I got my camel hand. And then we've got our pumpkin and the feet. Let's put it back here so you can kind of see. I think y'all can see the whole, the whole enchilada, as they say. That's what I like to say. So I base coated her twice in that light orange. Here's your lime green base coat, camel base coat on the feet and the hand, scarecrow up here on the face, light yellow base coat here, and brilliant blue base coat there. And that's all I did. All right, so let's see. I'm going to look at the calendar. It doesn't look like you guys have any questions. I guess that's good. Uh, today's September the 7th. Getting paint all over me. And so we have the next two days off. And then Thursday, Ashley will be here doing a football turkey. And then of course, next Sunday, Miss Victoria will be doing the ride or die, ride or die witch trio. Uh, I need to make an adjustment. And I know we have this on the uh, Facebook page. Um, Sandy, what kind of time is the Academy Live? It's actually, most all of our lives are at seven, but good question. Thank you for that, Sandy. But I do have to make a change. For those of you that are just joining, when you join the Painters Club or the Academy, well, we have two Facebook pages. Let's go over that. We have the Academy Facebook page and we have the Painters Club Facebook page, which if you're an Academy member, you can get in both of them. No problem. Um, but if you look at your calendar, that'll tell you, and I usually have the calendar and the announcements, which is that top section of the Facebook page. And I have the Academy for next Monday at seven o'clock, but I have to change that. I'm gonna have to change that to Wednesday. Next Monday, I will be on Tamara Bennett's page doing a, um, a Christmas Santa. And she's asked me to come back. So I'll be doing that next Monday at 7. So here on the calendar, and I'll put this on the uh, Facebook pages so y'all don't have to necessarily remember it right now. But we are changing the academy. We won't have anything on the 14th. There'll be nothing on our page on the 14th. But it will be on the 16th at 7 o'clock for the academy. Because I'll be on Tamara's page. Now, next Tuesday, I'll be doing a uh, cat. Uh, the cat's kind of crawling out of a pumpkin. I'll be doing that next Tuesday. And then next Wednesday, I'll be doing the, in the Academy, uh, the Scarecrow with the Crow on the arm that I should have been doing on Monday, but I had I'd got my dates mixed up on that. And then, of course, next Thursday, Ashley will be doing the Triple Stack Pumpkins. So we have all kinds of stuff going next week. Thanks, Connie, for that and posting that. And just wanted to remind you guys that the Academy closes tonight at 10 o'clock for those of you that are still thinking about joining. Those, we've had a lot of people join, and thank you. Uh, you'll be seeing some stuff from us in the next few days. We'll get you into the Facebook Academy page. And uh, just a couple reminders that uh, when you're in the Academy, you get 15% off any blanks that you purchase from us. Now, you don't get 15% off everything. Like the paint, you don't get 15% off that or the brushes. But you do get 15% off of your blanks. So the Academy closes tonight at 10. If you are thinking about that, we'd love to have you join. Hope you guys got a lot out of here. Hey, Brian, how are you? Hope you had a good uh, Labor Day. Hi, Miss Joyce. I haven't forgotten you. I'm going to check on your order tomorrow, Miss Joyce, and I'll, I'll text you back. And um, thank you guys so much for watching tonight. I hope that uh, you got some ideas what to do with the Scarecrow. 
and um, they're super easy and they're super cute, I think. So we'll see you guys later and we will see y'all in the academy or on our next video here. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.